start recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first WordPress Toronto uh, meetup of 2021. My name is Alex Sirota. I'm the director of New Path Consulting. I'm one of the co-organizers of the group. Uh, we have Robin McRae, who's another co-organizer of WordPress Toronto with me. Say hi, Robin. Hello, all. And Dan Stramer is here. He's muted right now. Dan, do you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Just coming There's online. Dan. There's Dan. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, so we are expecting some more people to file in probably over the next half hour or so. And um, uh, I will, uh, I'll ask actually, let's see, uh, I'll ask Dan, could you, uh, as people go into the meeting room, uh, could you go ahead and review and, and uh, accept them as they go come in so I don't have to worry about that? Sure, you just made me co-host? Yeah, I just made you yeah. co-host, yeah. Yeah, no problem. So I'll, uh, you can just kind of, uh, as, as people are filing in, that should be probably the case in the first, maybe it's half hour or so, I feel that people are probably yeah. gonna continue to come in. Um, so the way that this meetup works is that uh, we actually do a couple of things. We uh, talk about our sponsors first and this, this, um, uh, this month we have, uh, as usual, Weglot is our sponsor, and uh, we have actually a video from them that I wanted to share with you. And then after that, it's a short video. And then after that, we were going to take questions from our discussion group. And then when we run out of questions on the discussion, then we'll, then we'll start in on uh, questions from people that are on the, uh, on the group here. So... Um, let me take a look at the messages and I'll share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Where is the league lot? So actually a couple of interesting things happened this month. I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, uh, I'm looking for the league lot video. Hmm. Let me just, let me just share the website actually. So this is our, our sponsor, Weglot. They actually pay for our Zoom account. And uh, uh, when we had in-person meetings, uh, they were also uh, sponsoring our pizza here as well. Weglot is a company out of Paris, France, and uh, they're a translation service. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually, um, there's a video here somewhere. I'm sure there was a video here somewhere. Um, this is a translation service that's a plugin and it works a little bit differently than most translation services. It actually helps you translate by um, doing a machine language translation on the web. And uh, it's done, it, it actually uh, doesn't require you to insert any translations uh, into your website. Um, but uh, I can't find the video right now. So I'm gonna actually search for it and maybe play the, the uh, translation a little bit later or the video a little bit later because I thought it was actually in our meeting notes here but can't find it so when I find it I will uh, I will go just ahead and add it to the chat window Alex if oh here it is I see if it. it's the video that you uh, cited as oh, a yeah. comment then that's it yeah that's it that's it that's the video so let me yeah, yeah, I you. might just suggest as well Alex if you feel like it um, there was a comment or question in regard to we glot um, that you might end this section by going to that one. It's out of order, but it kind of, you know, it's related. Oh, cool. absolutely. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, let's go ahead and share. I'm gonna share the sound, optimize for video clip. Okay, so let me just see if this is working here. Hi guys, Elizabeth here from Weglot. Today, I'm gonna show you how to translate your WordPress website using Weglot. So let's get started. Here we are on our WordPress website. And as you can see, it's only available in English. So let's go to your WordPress dashboard and install the Weglot plugin. Add new. And then in the search bar, type in Weglot. We're the first one that turns up in the search. So just click install now. That would just take a couple of seconds. And then activate. Now that it's activated, you'll see you have a brand new Weglot tab in your dashboard. 
In your Weglot tab, you'll see you have three boxes to fill out. The first one is your API key. And to get your API key, you need to create an account with Weglot. Once you've created your account, you'll find yourself on a page like this. Here's your API key. Simply copy it, go back onto the dashboard, paste, and then select the original language of your website. So in this case, we have an English website. And then I'm going to add French to our website. All you have to do now is save changes. And your multilingual website is ready. So let's click on go to my front page. And here you'll see we have a language switcher. So if we switch to French, you'll now find the website has been automatically translated into French. And you'll also find you have a language subdirectory, which is really great for SEO. We're back in your WordPress dashboard and in the Weglot tab to show you how to edit your translations. Now, Weglot can translate your website into more than 100 languages and offers a fast first layer of automated translations. But if you want to make an edit to those translations, you can simply do that by clicking on Edit My Translations. This will take you to the Sorry, I'm switching the, uh, you to the Weglot dashboard and your translations list. Click in to your French translation and you'll see side by side you have the English and French translations. If you want to make a change, you just click into the translation, make the change of your choice, and it will automatically save and appear on the front of your website. Now there's a second way you can do this. Go back to your dashboard, click on visual editor, start editing, and you'll see a live preview of your website. And here you'll know exactly where the translations are. Say you want to change this one, you click on the blue pencil icon and make the change the same way. Click OK and the translation has again saved and will now appear on your website. I'm back in your Weglot tab on the WordPress dashboard to quickly show you one more thing. You can actually make changes to the position and appearance of your language switcher directly here. There are a number of options such as drop down, flag, type of flag, etc. And down here you'll find information on how to change the position. Is it in the menu, as a widget, etc. And there you go, you've now got a fully translated WordPress website. Any questions? Please feel free to reach out to us at support at weglot.com. Until next time, bye! All right, so that was a little bit of an introduction. I know the video may have been a little bit blurry, but I shared it in the uh, in the notes. That's about as good of a demo as you're going to get on a, a short a short demo on uh, on Weglot and how it gets installed and how it does its job. You just uh, you can see that it does something quite uh, unusual. And so Dan, I think Dan had a uh, did you do a site with Weglot as an implementation, Dan? Yeah, I just. Uh... Just finished creating a, a website. I can share my screen. Yeah, please. Okay. All right. So this is a site uh, for various uh, uh, static products, and they are located in Vancouver, and they sell uh, in in Canada. And therefore, they they wanted their website to be French, of course. Now, before this version of the site, they they had a site which I also uh, took care of for them, but it was a different domain, and we had WPML. And every time there was a new product, we had to uh, recreate the uh, translation and talk to the translator and get the docs and get the Word docs and update it, and that was a whole headache. So with Weglot. It, as you saw in the video, it's really fast and easy. So all we did was add a little button here, uh, FR, and once you click it, uh, automatically everything is French and no more need to redo the site, to redo the translation, go back and forth with a translator. Everything is done uh, on the spot. And if we want to make a little tweaks and fixes and they go to the back end of Weglot or the website and they can change a specific word. And, you know, it 
probably took away uh, tens of hours of work. Uh, so it's, it's a really cool uh, solution. That's it. Thank you. That was great. Anybody any questions so for Dan while he's there? But he's got direct experience about legal. Dan, hi, Susan here. We are bouncing around. Um, how did your clients find the French up to their standards, or did you have to make a lot of editorial changes? Well, it's I know that site, can be a sore point. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and I know that there are probably different versions. Since this is a French company and they don't have Canadian French, they have French French. Oh. Um, so That's that might so be uh, some, some issue, but still, it's relatively uh, uh, new. So we just launched last week and uh, I haven't got uh, any like serious uh, backlash. So it's a few words uh, fixed good. here and there. Uh, but they might have more as, uh, as they go and, and review the site, but it's not a catastrophe or a, in any sense. It's, oh, that's good. good. And because it's positive. mostly advertising, I mean, it's more forgivable anyway. But it just c occurred to me that, you know, if you had anything hmm, too technical, you'd probably have a lot of debates about what words were best and which were not and all that sort of thing. And it would be the same if you were switching French to English as well. But no, it looks nice. Looks really handy. I yeah, want to go bilingual now. Oh dear. Okay, thanks. I have a question. Would this work uh, for a blog post? Sure, it works for all the content you have in the site, from the menu to the footer, including the blog post, including the contact forms, everything uh, that you could see, the translation can see. So ads as well. What do you mean ads as in if it, well graphics it doesn't yes. switch if you if you saw um, on my on my uh, example there was some some thumbnails of images uh, so that doesn't translate I'm not sure if you can I haven't tried it change the path meaning create a new image in that language that you wanted and if the user is viewing that language uh, load the the image in that language so I would need to check that Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Welcome. Uh, there was a question, Dan, about cost. How much does it cost to have a site translate into to have translation on a site such as the one you did? Right. So it depends on the amount of words that you have on the site. So they have like a free plan up to two thousand words and one translation, and then as you go up with the, the amount of words that you have, the price goes up and the the options for more languages goes up. So for example, I think up to 10,000 words, it's something like 100 uh, euros a year. Um, and then as it goes up, the price goes up. You can see there's a, a pricing page on their website. Do you have any follow-ups, Mamdu? Um, so, so what you're saying that it's it's not like you don't pay once, like you like when you pay a like when you purchase a plugin, but you you pay regularly, right? So, right, it's a service, and service. a lot of a lot of products right now in the echoes in the, in general in, in the internet are becoming a, a paid subscription because I then see. then the developer can keep on uh, developing and, and maintaining and supporting. It's a more viable product when, when you see a subscription rather than a one-off thing, because then you're not sure it'll be supported. Okay, thank you. And there's a link in the, uh, Claudio left a link on how to change media image file PDF and translated version. So thank you, Claudio. Hi everybody. Yes, I was just checking on the website and I found that it's possible. Do you have to tweak some, uh, so it's not automatically changed, but you have to specify which images you want to change there's some technology out there now that's been around for a while that will probably eventually implement the ability to change the text itself and superimpose translated text on images they i'm i talked to weglot a few months ago but they know they're aware of the technology they just don't know um how to keep the original integrity of the image so it's quite a complicated problem but 
technically, it, believe it or not, it's actually reasonably feasible. It's just a question of how, uh, how much compute is it required. So I wouldn't be surprised that in a few years, you'll be able to literally translate everything, every media type, no matter what it is. Yeah, I mean, today they translate, switch videos, you know, they switch what people are saying in videos. So images is, is a easy. Yep. We're, we're in a world where uh, whatever you see on the screen or hear or, or, or listen to may not actually be generated by a person, but rather by a computer. Yeah. Um, so we're in that age now. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's great. Uh, so thank you for, for that, Dan. That's great that you, uh, that you showed that. That makes it real. Um, okay. So we're going to go back to the messages. I'm going to see we have quite a bit of great stuff here, which is great. Uh, Anouk, are you here on the call with us? Yeah, I see your name. You're muted, though. But it looks like you fixed your... Talking your, to your, me? I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, there you are. It looks like you you have a translation issue. But were you using Weglot or something else? No, I'm using WPML. WPML. Yes. Is that the word? All right. And you were able to fix your problem already? No. No. Show so, show us. Oh, okay. So show us the. Oh, actually, you have a brand new one. Okay. So show us the show us your issue, and we'll see if we can help you. Um, oh, screen. or tell. Screen. Screen. Oh, screen share. Okay. Show us what's happening. Um, can you see it now? Yep. Okay, perfect. So, let me see. If I go to, where is it? It is uh, not very really fast, as you can see. Am I doing anything? Um, so if I would go into Let me see which one I had issues with. So, for example, this product does show up on the English site. Um, if I go here, it should pop up in, what is the category, baby care, and it does show up in baby care, but then if I go to the Dutch version, and I would tag it in the same category, but then the Dutch version of baby care, which is called baby versorging, it doesn't actually show up, even though I've tried many different things and, um, deleting the category and adding a new category again to see if I maybe linked something wrong or I'm just not sure what it is. So um, can you, can you explain to us? Like, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not that familiar with WPML. Is anybody else on the call here have experience with WPML? Uh, I, I have used it a couple of times. I'm just not not sure exactly what, what the problem is or, or what. So exactly. if I would now tag it in this category, which is the Dutch version of baby care, huh? and I want to update it, huh? it doesn't actually come up on the website under the category baby care. Uh -huh. And it does, it, does, it does on the English version. It just does not on the Dutch. Uh, translated version. So that's a real category, right? The, the Dutch version is an actual real yeah. post, post category. And, right? and the category itself shows up on the website. There's a Dutch translation. Just the products won't show are there up. Any other, are there any other products that show up under that Dutch category? Uh, 
but you can just do that in WordPress and show us, do a filter on a Dutch category just to see, because those are actual real categories, right? Yes, yeah. I can show you the website here. So I go to the Dutch one here. So I definitely have some speed issues I also need to work on. Um, anyway, so here it says the category. Uh -huh. And it, it just, I just tagged it in it, um, but it, it doesn't show up. Is there any, are there any blog posts, sir? So here you see that I'm, I tagged it in here and I saved it, but it's gone again. It just doesn't stay in there. And I, I just it's don't know being, what it is. Yeah, it's not being saved or something. No, different. and there's no issues on the English uh, version. Well, I understand, yeah. But the WPML looks like it creates. Are they, I wonder, are these actual real? They must. Can you go to your. Uh, uh, categories, yes. Your posts categories. Go to the posts and go to. Yeah. I'm trying to understand. I don't have any experience with this, this plugin. This is, by the way, the reason why Weglot does things very different. I, I don't, I don't know. So, okay. Uh, oh, I see. So go up for a sec. Uh, and go to e go to English. Under, no, sorry, under oh, under sorry. the under the category sections there. It says Dutch English Dutch one English four under bulk actions there. Um, so I think he's uh, mentioning, yeah, under bulk action. Sorry, I'm going back. Yeah, uh, but yeah. If you click English, there are four categories. I saw a lot more categories in that product, so I. Yeah. Um, so my, th this is not where I make my categories. Yeah, these are not. These are not posts. So these categories are actually under products, then, right? Eh? Yeah. So. Uh, my categories are under, um, have them here. Maybe. Maybe. Pretty sure. Okay, let's look. Not sure why would they be under menus? Because. Where are they? I would imagine those are, are those WooCommerce? Yeah, 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 under products. Yeah, yeah that's, where I would, that's where I would expect it. They're WooCommerce category. They're not. Blog posts are actually with commerce categories. <clears throat> so here they are. And I see that there, there is, in fact, category. there's something. Something definitely, uh, I mean, you've got, okay, so like, let's look at, are there any, are any of these categories have actually a count? Like, hmm. Yeah, so the categories itself, so this is the one. Yeah, but you see the count on the right, on the right side, none of these categories are pot, well, actually, uh, okay, you've got one up there called accessories NL accessoires so that's that's got one in it see the count is how many products are in that category well the, the point is that i'm trying to put them in the category but they just don't show up doesn't well it doesn't save it yeah so that's a that's there's definitely no. an issue well, here's one kaido and sets or sorry skin skincare is actually got 32 in there yeah so skincare is um the general name where these categories fall under. So oh. there's baby care, there's cleansers, there's moisturizers under skincare. So these products are are categorized under skincare in the Dutch version. They just don't show up in the proper proper category. You want to have any ideas what's happening here? Uh, just 
uh, a, perhaps a related point, but I'm on the site now and trying to switch from English to Dutch and back again. And it really just isn't doing, it isn't working properly in that regard. So the problem may be in the way the plugin's working rather than the coding on the site itself. Uh, plus I just, I've been getting a Google Translate pop-up saying always translate Dutch. Um, so presumably this WPML uses Google Translate. Do you know, Anouk, whether that's the case? I'm not sure. And then finally, uh, once it does show that it's switched, meaning it has the Dutch flag displayed on a page, um, it doesn't actually then translate, it's still the English. No, that's not So true. just from the point of view of the site and the way it's currently working, there I don't see any Dutch at all. Um, and the way um, in which it's switching is so labored that it can't be working correctly. No, I think the, let me check, because all the categories are shown in Dutch. No, so but just taking a page, like I'm on the, uh, every season is bikini season. I guess that's a swimmer page or whatever. Can and, you see my screen? Because here it shows in Dutch. Right, but if you go to, well, I, I'm just, that may be the case. I'm just saying that here I am on your site and unable to change language um, that's, for what it's worth. That's, oh, no, okay. Because when I switch, that's what I'm trying to say is it does change language for me when I change the, right. Um, if I change the flag on my uh, website. Right. Right. I, I'm not arguing any particular point. I'm just observing and reporting. Yeah, no. So um, I, I'm, I just I don't understand what you mean, because for me, it does change. So I'm not sure what it what yeah, it is. It, yeah, it, it does change. It just it does. There's an extra translate pop up depending on your browser that also asks you that. But it does it does change the language, though, even though it asks that. Okay. So that's true. Anouk, have you tried contacting WPML support if you have a license and you paid for their product? No, I was waiting on tonight for mm -hmm. further yeah. steps. <laughs> because I know they do have uh, reasonable support. It's not amazing, but you can try them. And uh, since you you know you have a paid product, they usually help. I, I have a question. M might be part of the the issue. Do, do you know which um, which like version or which um, which of the plugins did you get? Because they have like different levels or different. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, different licenses for the WPML. Um, uh, I just went on the site. And what's interesting is that the translate is sort of partly working for me so that the content translates, but the navigation stays in English. And the, um, let me just double check. The navigation stays English and the heading is English, but- um, Yes, that's correct. Act, um, yeah. And uh, the footer is also partly in English and partly in Dutch. So it's kind of... Well, it's um, Dutch is sort of like a language where we use a lot of English terms. So we would uh -huh. say about on a Dutch web page. Right, or, okay. I or, don't speak a word of Dutch. Um, but so we use, we use terms as, as skincare. Right, and swimwear and yeah. Yeah. all that. Yeah. But say it says... Every summer has a story, what's yours? We live in a paradise called Earth and it's our goal to preserve this paradise. And then we get to the, um, and then under that, it's in Dutch. Let me check. Yeah. So uh, it's you... partly working. Okay. I'm gonna check right now. Do you know how much was the license that you got? Was it 29 or 79? Um, I can check here, right? Hmm. 
Does it? No, I, I don't think it says. I'm, I'm just asking because the, mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a multilingual blog and multilingual CMS. The blog does not cover or does not support uh, WooCommerce. Sorry, could you repeat that? You said that so what? They have, two, they have two licenses. Yeah. The first license, which is $29, this does not support WooCommerce. So if no, you have this one, then everything related to WooCommerce will not work. No, it was more than $29 that I know okay. for sure. Mm -hmm. okay, I think, okay. yeah. Thanks, so I will check. Uh, okay. To be sure, but just, I remember paying more than $29. Yeah, just one thing, when, when you're still working on the content and editing, it's better to, to uh, disable any caching plugins because sometimes this can, can be part of the issue or, or the whole issue. That uh, when the when the caching is is on and you're still editing, you you're not seeing uh, like the latest content changes. I, I see here you have the the fastest cache on. So if you can uh, like delete cache and then disable it while working, th this will make things more uh, like more consistent for you. My main I'm concern kind of a beginner. Where can I find that? I'm sorry. Um. You will see it under uh, probably under settings. First of all, on the top bar. Excuse me, there's Claudio here. Please. If you go delete on the cache. menu on the top, yeah. there is a on delete the top, yeah. cache on, on the, the right hand side. Delete cache. Yeah. Yeah, almost there. I see your mouse. Yeah. Oh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the tip. And and then disable the plugin for now until you're like you're done with your content and then you can enable it again. The delete the cache plugin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm saying, yeah, sure. I'm, oh, I'm it doesn't explain why uh, the, the, the product categories aren't saved. That's yes. in my mind no. a, a huge concern, right? Because you would, if they don't save, that means they won't appear under the website. As simple as that, right? So. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, not guys, uh, Sir Claudio. Uh, I see a message here. I don't know if this can be related. So it says WPML all import requires WP or import pro free and WPML multilingual CMS. Can this be related to the fact that this is not working on all the fields? I'm not sure because I, I never use a WPML, but this can be also <laughs> part of the problem. Yeah, you, you're saying maybe the actual yes. plugin is not properly activated altogether. Because that's an import plugin. All import is for importing content. So it can be that even though the translations of the categories itself appear, but it cannot tag the products in it. There, 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 is, there is a definitely some sort of an issue with the the, the the category category the category assignment in WooCommerce categories. The question is why that's occurring. You have to get to the root cause of that, right? Like one approach to debug this would be to clone this site, make a duplicate of it. A this is a production site, right? So you can create a, a copy of this site uh, on a staging server and deactivate plugins that potentially could be causing this problem. Because like, I mean, you could open up an issue with WPML, but I can probably guess the first thing they're gonna say is how many plugins do you have? 49? Uh-huh. Why don't you start deactivating plugins until we figure out why this core issue is, is happening of, of, you know. And by the way, our, our and you said English categories are being saved. The yeah. Dutch ones aren't, right? So there, there is a, so there's some sort of interaction. They're gonna ask you to start debugging this issue. We could, we could spend the rest of the, the two hours doing that here right so but i think i would i recommend actually do you know how to make a staging copy of your site make a no no do you, do you know where is it hosted uh dutch hosting company contact them, contact them and ask them if they can create a copy of your site in another subdomain okay thank you copy the whole site the database everything so you can experiment with it without touching the production site okay and and then you basically have to get to the root cause of why this functionality isn't working because it, 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 if, it, if the if this if this woocommerce category is not being saved it isn't going to show up on the site that that's for sure yeah all right and that's that that'll be the start of the uh 
Sorry, we couldn't help you more, but this is this is definitely one of these really deep. It's already a step further, so thank you. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the idea, just to kind of set you in the right direction. Sometimes we can fix things, but this one is. Yeah. This is a, a complicated one. Um. Okay. Um. Is a uh, is a a b a w a n? Oh, that's Alvin. Alvin, are you there? Oh, it looks like you were able to solve your problem. Alvin. I'm going through the meetup notes. I'm, I'm unable to replicate how to make show side, show hide sidebar. Alvin, going once, twice. Yep, it's solved, thanks. Oh, it's solved, cool. Uh, so you changed your script to solve it, yeah? Okay. Anybody interested in seeing what this was all about, just to learn from it? Um, This looks like a coding question. Well, if you visit the meetup, you can listen to it. So we won't spend time on that one. Jennifer Arnott, are you here? Jennifer? Yes, I am. And uh, I solved my issue. Um, it turned out to be a coding error in uh, how to uninstall the plugin. They left off part of the file name. Oh. Wow. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you fix this problem? Um, it in the, I don't really know what I'm doing, but in the error message, it said something about line 112. So I just went into my editor and um, tried to find, replicate the path and then got to where the plugin was and then went down to 112 and just looked and compared the text and saw that part of the file name was missing. So, so it, was a, it was a coding error in the original plugin. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. I mean, you weren't able to actually delete it as a result, I see. Okay. Well, good job. Thank good you. Good job. That's great. Learning. <laughs> yeah, no, you 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 use the uh, error messages. By the way, those error messages are turned on because you have probably WP debug turned on, right? Or WP display. Um I don't believe I do. I think that that was just the error message that popped up um when I was trying to uh, network deactivate. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. All right. Well, good job for solving it. Um, wait a moment. Okay. Do you have? You looks like you have. Oh no, is that the same one? Uh, okay. No, that was the same one. It looks like you guys had a conversation about this particular. Okay. Yeah. Um, another solution was proposed, and that wasn't the issue. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, by the way, just uh, a quick uh, heads up to folks. Uh, there is a. Uh, um, a new re resource online called learn.wordpress.org. It's a free um, uh, WordPress learning system that uh, WordPress has just launched. It's pretty cool, actually. They have two different kinds of uh, resources, workshops and lesson plans. Workshops are more like, kind of like a, a set of videos. Uh, and then they have like Q&A kind of quizzes. And lesson plans are kind of the things we might actually use in the future in this meetup. I, kind of, I really like some of the ideas here. So um, some of them are more around a WordPress submission experience it's about speakers, creating an account. This one is interesting. It's a 45 minutes uh, uh, lesson plan, but it's got information about keeping secure and it's got videos and Q&A. So here's an example of what it looks like. You've got objectives and, and skills. And then you have like a hands-on walkthrough. And uh, um, you see, they've got a bunch of really interesting suggestions, plugins, exercises, assessments. It's quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of uh, interesting stuff here. Um, this, uh, um, this, this lesson plan doesn't, this one particularly doesn't have videos, but you can actually take each one of these um, walk through and actually go through a system and follow it along and kind of have an interactive lesson plan. It's kind of cool. Um, and, and you are able, anybody can actually submit lessons. So it's kind of like an open source learning repository. Here's one, we have, we have this question all the time, improving site performance. This might be an interesting one to work through because these are, you know, these are provided by probably some of the best experts in WordPress in the world. So you see they have like questions around how performance works and what the implications of performance is. Um, and, uh, 
how, you know, how to measure site performance. What can you, so there's, you know, there's a lot of really good stuff here. I mean, it's interesting to read, but it's more interesting to actually experiment some of this stuff. And I, and I think this is brand new launch, really new. It talks about child themes, uh, choosing. So there's actually quite a bit of lesson plans in here now. These have been added quite dramatically even when they launched a few days ago. Uh, and then the and then the courses are more of like uh, video courses and lessons. There's less of those here, but also probably pretty good. And then the workshops are hands-on kind of. Um, uh, so you have like all kinds of, all kinds of workshops here on site management, block editor, WordPress for kids. A lot of a lot of interesting stuff here. So this is going to be, I think, a really good repository for free uh, content, free sessions. So. Have a look at that. Okay, it's uh, learn.wordpress.org. Um, let's see here. Eitan, you have a question, I believe, yeah? Yeah. Eitan, are you there? Yeah. There you are. So um, welcome, by the way, it's your first time. Thank you. Hmm. She says, you're having a problem with WordPress not updating my pages using advanced custom fields. I am manually so, coding in HTML. So can, can you take us through your issue? So what ended up happening is the person who created this website, I actually, um, I was taking over this website. Uh -huh. The person who created this website ended up having some kind of restrictions uh -huh. um, on how to, on how many fields are allowed. And I did not realize that. So the issue was resolved and they, they fixed um, the limits on the number of fields in the advanced custom field. Huh. Uh, now I just kind of have like a follow-up question. I'm kind of new to this um, and I don't exactly know where these limits would be. So if anyone has experience with this and might know where you can set these kinds of limits, that would be great. Well, do you know what advanced custom fields is, what the plugin does? Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you describe for everyone else on the call what your understanding of this plugin is? So what I, what I have in this plugin right now, uh, what I've figured out is basically you cr can create these different fields um, and they're basically like templates for pages and you can then create a new WordPress page and use the field as a template for that page and uh, submit and type in like text or different kinds of fields, images um, into that page to, um, to create a page. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anybody else have any other input on what advanced custom fields is very popular plugin. So Aitan, do you have access to your backend of the website? Yes. So if you want, we can check out and, and I can show you where that limit is created for that specific custom field group. Uh, if that, that is what I think you're meaning. So I'm not entirely sure how these limits are created um, because I obviously did not create them. So I'm not sure what kind of limits they are, but it was limiting what I could update. So for example, there was a calendar um, and, that, and there were only six fields allowed, six different tables of a calendar. Um, right. And then for you couldn't add another field for another table under that. All right, so this is usually done with the, what it's called a repeater field. So you can add data uh, in a repeater field. And, and one of the functionalities of advanced custom fields is to limit the amount of rows you can, uh, you can add. This is usually done, for example, let's say you have a homepage and you have three, three featured items in the homepage which are created with advanced custom field. Now, you don't want the editor of the site to put in four, four featured items. You want to lit, limit him to three. So in the, in the advanced custom field, which I'll call from now on ACF, um, you have an option to limit the amount of rows that you allow the editor to add in the admin. Mm -hmm. So you, you can either limit it to a number or you just leave it blank and then it's unlimited. 
Okay. So again, if you want to check it out where it's done, you know, if you have access to your admin, we can look into it. I mean, um, do you mean like the, the server, like the actual WordPress files and the hosting? No, I mean WP admin, where you edit oh, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. WordPress site. Yeah, I have that. So should I? So if you want to, yeah, go share? there and then share a screen and then we can take a look. Okay, hold on. Okay, can you see? Yeah. So here's the custom right. fields over there. Now, do you know which field you, you were? So it's school calendar? Um, yeah, this one. There are multiple actually, but this is main one. Okay, I think. so click on school calendar. Oh, okay, so they didn't even do it with a repeater field. They just added fields. And if, if you scroll up. Yeah. So, for example, you wanted to add. So like, what I ended up doing, you see, um, you see how there are um, seven, I think there were six or seven months. And mm -hmm. so what I add is, is an eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, right? And right. so in doing that, um, what ended up happening is it would update the content in these one, two, three, four, five, six. But after that, they wouldn't even show the fields. Right. So what I ended up doing is I went into the actual WordPress files where it has this template and manually typed in the like copy paste of the code used to generate these other fields and did right it like because that. you need to add you needed to add the ninth month calendar the tenth month calendar text and so on yeah so a better way to do it uh, is with a repeater field because with a repeater field you would only need two fields and they would loop okay. so let's say you wanted to add fifty months it's not you know feasible to add all these rows here. So you would, yeah. you know, either find out a bit about repeater fields yourself through the ACF site. They have lots of support and documents there. Or talk to the developer and tell them, listen, why don't you change this to repeater field? So if I want to add more, I don't have to start coding. Okay, thank you. Sure. I mean, I, I actually uh, contacted him and he what he did is he added, he changed the limit for me, basically. I was just... Um, but uh, he did it like earlier today, so I was already um, signed up for this meetup. So I was just yeah, curious okay. now where these limits are and how to fix. So that. it's not a limit. It's just because the fields were not created. That's why you didn't. You, you couldn't use. No, them. but I I added them in here. It's just they didn't actually show right, up on you, the site. Need, right, because advanced custom fields works in in two steps. The first step is creating these fields here, and the second step would be embedding them in the site's files okay oh, so okay. you you didn't have the second step because you know you, you didn't know about that so I, but again if you would have created a repeater field or the developer would have you wouldn't have to touch the site's uh, uh file because once you have it there you're not limited with the amount of fields that you want to add okay thank you then is there a good uh, resource for advanced custom fields uh um, yeah, training yeah there, I mean, if you go to the ACF site, there's a very lively forum there with support, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and he has examples also about all the types of fields that you need there. And you know, and if you go to YouTube, you get millions of videos. That, that this explain. plugin is probably one of the more powerful plugins that exists for WordPress. I have to say, yeah, um, it's it's aimed at developers though. It's not aimed at end users of Wild Africa. It's aimed at making a lot of functionality be dynamic based on configuration that the end users do. There's so many different ways that this thing can be used. Just looking for the, uh, is it under the support? Well, there's a knowledge base and uh... yeah, connect with users. Yeah, so this is the Advanced Custom Fields website. So this, probably this, uh, resource library and, and this documentation. Um, so, so I would suggest um, to anyone who uses this plugin to really understand what's going on here and why, and why this plugin is used. 
A lot of developers misuse this plugin to do all kinds of weird stuff, which happened in your case. It's, it's, it's kind of like they did a shortcut to a problem without really understanding what your end use case will be. And so as a result, you're kind of locked into a particular way it was implemented. And you should probably change that implementation to make it more support. I mean, it, it, it depends on what you care, I guess. If you understand how to you know, use it the way it is and you're fine with it, it's fine. But it's, like Dan said, it's probably not the right. Yeah, if you want it to be future-proof, a repeater yeah. field would be the way to go. And Alex, if you click on the top of the page uh -huh. on the menu of documentation, uh -huh. go left of cap. Click the documentation here. Mm -hmm. They will list all the types of uh, fields. Uh -huh. If you click on field types, uh -huh. you see uh -huh. all the types of fields that you have and with examples, and it's really good. This is like, think about you're, you're essentially customizing the administrative system with your own functionality. That's what kind of custom fields is. It's got almost an infinite amount of capabilities of what you could do with it with WordPress. Um, it's really powerful product. A lot of people build themes and configuration with themes and use custom fields as the mechanism to actually configure the theme instead of the customizer or on top of the customizer. So this is a product that has a really a lot of functionality. Let's see what this, what's in the guides here. Uh -huh. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff about how to add fields in different parts of the system. Yeah. The front end forms, just an incredible amount of functionality. Really powerful plugin. One day, maybe this will be part of the WordPress actually, because it's that, it's that fundamental to the way WordPress works. Okay, um, let's continue here. Uh, so I actually, Dale, hi, Dale. You got a, you're muted. Uh, hi, how are you? Good. So you have a question about PHP sessions created by session start function call. So in particular, we're having multiple performance issues on our website. Oh, so um, different. Uh, this downfalls. is Jordan, my son. Ah, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we're having multiple performance issues on our website, and we're not really sure how to actually fix them. We've looked into them ourselves, and, and we're just kind of lost. Mm. What's the website? Um, it's themonty.com. I'm seeing if I can pull it up here for you. Yeah, please. And share your screen. By the way, we're going through all the meetup questions first, and then we'll take the meet up, the questions from chat. Okay, so it's up. Okay, the Monty. Okay. Um. So this is the actual website. Okay. And as you can see, it's slow. Like it takes a long time to finish loading, it looks like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of those performance issues, uh, debugs, right? Could be a lot of things happening here. Well, when we actually upgraded to the newest WordPress, uh -huh. we, we ended up with a couple of different issues. And we had to add this jQuery migrate thing to, in order to do anything with the site. We weren't able to change any of the content uh -huh. when we upgraded. Uh -huh. Okay, just a warning about this jQuery migrate. You this will be not supported in future versions of WordPress. I suggest highly either getting an update to those plugins to support them or choose different plugins that don't require it. Okay. That, that's, that's a given now because WordPress, jQuery is a JavaScript library that's been around for a long time. And in the recent version of WordPress 5.6, they actually upgraded the core version of jQuery and they deprecated older versions. Now, so plugins that required the older versions that didn't it wasn't compatible with the newer ones they had to use this migrate plugin. But they're going to be deprecating all the jQuery stuff. What I mean by deprecating is stop support for it. Yeah. And it will break. 
like it, there will be a time in the future where they're just not going to support all these older jQuery migrate plugins. So whatever plugins that you're currently, you know, kind so of limping along I, with, I would suggest. I, so I think one that. of our issues is our theme. Well, you have quite a bit of issues here. Right? There's four critical issues yeah. on the site. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like not a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's not, it can be the plugins, but it usually is the theme, like you said. Well, have you tried actually, again, copying this site to another staging site and, and following all the instructions that Site Health is suggesting, so essentially deactivating some of the plugins to see what happens? No. No, we have not. No. But to, in order to like fix this problem, you obviously don't want to fix this in production. This is something, again, you go to your host and say, can we clone and make a copy of this site? Um, and in some cases, they'll, they'll have a means to do that. If not, you could use a backup plugin or manage WP is another plugin that allow you to essentially copy the database, copy all the code and create, and then you, and then you install a new version of WordPress and install it there. So you can tweak around and see like, you know, and, and actually debug what the issue is, right? Um, okay. So long story short, we have to find out which plugin is the issue, kind of delete it and update to a newer version. Which plugin, which theme, uh, you know, sometimes there's brute force methods, like you essentially install, uh, uh, potentially even change hosts and install. Uh, we had an experience with one where we changed hosts to a faster host and uh, installed Lightspeed Cache. Not sure if you're using a cache caching system. I'm not sure if that would fix any of the problems here, but there's like there's kind of two two ways. One is brute force, accidental fixing the problem, but normally that doesn't actually fix the problem, just masks it. And then the other one is actually what, what I was suggesting, which is you know debugging piece by piece and using site health to identify real site health issues. And unfortunately, in some cases, that might mean either up uh, that you may have to stop using a particular plugin and use and find an alternative right okay like let's go back to your site health i just i'm just you went you navigated quickly away from that but let's go back to your site health i mean this was introduced in wordpress for a reason specifically this reason um, and look down into the site health. Uh, yeah so you have let's go to the site health status uh site health screen Coding. yeah it's loading oh it's loading ah i have to get there yeah. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, so this, so interestingly enough in the first one there, it doesn't tell you what's causing this, right? No. Um, but it's a, it's definitely a problem, but yeah. it's probably a, that's probably a side effect of something else that's happening here because as, as I understand it, this PHP session start is basically when WordPress starts spitting out your website, it calls this call. And then something's happening in between, and that's why your site isn't finishing loading. So there's some so there's fairly fundamental issue happening here. And then this REST API issue is that your REST, your, your REST API is your API that sort of sends and receives data between other systems. And it's obviously not, it's timing out. Um, and then, Sorry, Claudio here. Can I also add another uh, thing? So I noticed that the QRL uh, error 28, uh, can be uh, probably linked to the hosting provider. So you should also check if the QRL uh, extension is uh, active in your uh, web hosting. This can be also part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, your host could be restricting, but this wasn't, was this always happening or is this something that just happened recently? This is something that happened recently. recently. When you upgraded to WordPress 5.6? Yes. Not all of these issues happened because of that update. Uh, there was an issue before that that wasn't resolved, but some of these were the result of upgrading. Uh -huh. And then the legacy version of jQuery is really some plugin is in installing jQuery 1.12. jQuery version, I believe, is three point something now. So it's like two major versions behind. It's, this plugin is, I mean, it's going to cause you problems basically in the future. Okay. It's, and, it's, uh, and it could be either in a plugin and or the theme. And so of course the real the, the real challenge is finding out which which plugin is using a legacy version of jQuery. It's not even telling you that, is it? No. No. Is the theme updated to the latest version? The DV DV theme that you're using? Mm -hmm. I believe so. 
to go to appearance themes. Sorry, where am I going? Appearance. Appearance. Theme. 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 Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, if, you, if you hover over the purple D, click on theme details. Yeah, I think it's updated. Doesn't have an update of link, so it's updated. I'm just trying to see. I'm going to try to load on my end here and see if there's any obvious. I mean, you know, sometimes there's like one thing that is causing the problem. You deactivate and all of a sudden the problem goes away. It's like, that's like the ideal thing. Of course, that deactivation may cause your website to stop functioning the way you expected it to. Yeah. Like I just loaded your site on my computer and I didn't have a problem. It loaded it fairly quickly and it completed it right away, which is kind of bizarre. I wonder, anybody else having problems loading this site, themonty.com? When I loaded it, it was very slow initially, and then it sort of popped and uh, then seems to be okay. Hmm. Are you using any caching plugins on the site? I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, there's definitely some, there is, I can, I noticed that actually does take a while to, it loads like all at once. It doesn't, it doesn't like load parts of it. And I noticed like it's, it starts loading, but I don't have, I don't see the problem that you're seeing, which is like, it never finishes loading. So I wonder if you, even if it's an intermittent problem. But it I mean, does, does seem to be an intermittent problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because now I'm loading another the used equipment page, and that took a good five six seconds to load, but then it loaded. Um, so, but but yeah, it's not it's not super speedy, that's for sure. Uh, what what's who's your host? GoDaddy. Oh, that's a problem. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's I would a I would migrate off this host. Okay. Who would you recommend? Uh, you asked me a couple of years ago. I, would, I was telling people to go on this host, but no, I'm turning them off. I've had enough problems with them that I would I would not. Uh, I'm not even sure which kind of hosting plan you're using. Are you using a managed WordPress flow? So are you using a? Uh, uh, yes, the WordPress managed WordPress. Oh yeah, yeah that's it's it's. You, it's should, you should try Flywheel or WP Engine. Yep. Yeah. They're w managed hosts. Yeah, WP Engine are the best. Uh, they're they're pretty pricey, and Flywheel. Uh, they were actually purchased by WP Engine, but they have lower tiers of pricing. You know and what? They're both very very helpful. We were on WP Engine um, initially, and then somebody was helping us, and they suggested GoDaddy. About two years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. that's, so we, that's so we should, I, don't know, I don't know how anybody could recommend that over. WP Engine, to be honest with you, even even if the GoDaddy was great, and WP Engine is probably the, the the king, the Cadillac of WordPress sites, right? Okay. okay, well that's good to know. Thank you. It's more expensive, right? I mean, if you wanted to save money, you would go to GoDaddy. Another one I've had success with personally, and I'm sure there's other people that have opinions here, is a smaller company called MDD Hosting, and we have a I have somebody that actually resells their stuff, and they they've moved some really slow sites over there and they perform much faster mdd hosting though uses lightspeed cache as their caching mechanism so that's the plugin you use that's what what's they what, what they recommend but it's a much smaller host mdd hosting okay but i mean there are literally hundreds of hosts out there anybody else have any good recommendations with hosts that they like web hosting what was that Web hosting candidates in Montreal. Oh, okay. You want to share the link in the. Uh, I think it's WHC. <laughs> I'm not trying because my, my computer tends to crash. 
when I'm using too much of this, like Zoom. Yeah, so feel free to share in the, in the chat host that you had good experience with. WHC, I believe is. WHC hosting? WHC.com, I believe. It's very mm -hmm. simple. Okay. <clears throat> so if you if you switch um, hosts, so mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem and it wasn't the money issue. It was, as I say, suggested by who was helping us with our site at the time. Is it very complicated to switch hosts? Well, this is actually one of the this is actually one of the reasons why hosts differentiate from each other. There's like there are hosts like WP Engine and Flywheel. They will they have a service. They will migrate your site. Um, yeah. We like my contact at MDD hosting or not at it, but she uses it and Marie Gill. She's in Seattle and she does the migrations at no cost to move them over. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, a lot of work. it's a lot of work, actually. That's the same at WHC. They just move it for you. Mm -hmm. Because it's like moving Alex, it. but Alex, if you're talking about a C panel to C panel move, mm -hmm. that's very straightforward. And in five minutes, uh, you can be from one host to another. And I think that's why hosts now offer it as a sort of a standard service because oh. as long as it's from something they know about and are built for, then it's quite easy for them to do. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. there's some hosts that will just do it as, as, it's like moving cell phone plans. Like effectively you become a new customer with them. And so it's worth it for them to invest whatever it takes up front. It, the, the size of the site makes a difference. If your site has 20, 30, 40, 50 gigabytes of media images, then it's going to be more complex than a site that has a gigabyte of, of space. If your database is gigantic and you have a complicated WooCommerce with a lot of advanced custom fields, well, I mean, in theory, the site, the, you know, moving WordPress is really moving the files and the database. That's, those are the two main components that need to be moved. And in most cases, that's really not an issue, right? Okay. But, um, but I wouldn't recommend, unless you know how to do it, I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself. Go no, that. Go that, uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> so, like, you know, you've, we've got SiteGround recommended twice, Cirrus Tech. That's another Canadian. It's a new one I haven't heard of. SiteGround, SiteGround is a huge hosting provider um, that has a lot of WordPress sites. Um, DreamHost is a good one. Yep. Uh, Amazon Cloud Hosting, that's actually. Amazon and Google are getting into the WordPress hosting game. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, AWS for hosting uh, is um, uh, mind-bendingly complex documentation. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that's what I found. And then since then, I found many other people who say the same thing. Uh, super inexpensive, very uh, more powerful perhaps than anybody else. It's yeah. just that it's intended for technically sophisticated people uh -huh. who work with it, you know, basically day in, day out. They don't, so they don't actually have, I think something called, I think like sale is their WordPress hosting. Uh, well, what, what their most basic one is free and it's um, uh, very easy to get started. Uh, you just get an image of a WordPress site, uh, uh -huh. install and copy it, or at least just select it. And then that's installed and you're up and running. Uh -huh. um, but that's not the issue. The issue is that everything around the site uh -huh. looks completely different than we're used to with either site panel or one of the other uh, site administration mm -hmm. you know, packages. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is that AWS services are so broad, numbering more than 500 now, that um, uh, it's just not, it's just a different sort of dimension altogether for us. Definitely, for sure. Well, so now I, I have another question. So before we move this site to some another host, should we be correcting these problems or trying to correct them or? In the ideal world, I would say yes. But the thing is, is that by actually moving a good host, would potentially look at these and say, hey, you know, this plugin that you're using, we don't support this plugin because of these reasons. They would force you to actually make some changes by making the move, some. Okay. Some would do that. Some will find that, hey, you know what? You, you shouldn't be doing this. For example, the jQuery thing, they'll say, 
okay, this plugin is using jQuery X. We, we don't recommend you using this plugin. See, now GoDaddy, because we were having issues with it. That was their fix. They, that was their fix for us. What's that? They, the jQuery. They installed the jQuery? Yes. They, that was their fix for us. Okay. Yeah, that's not a fix. That's, that's a band-aid, right? Yes. I mean, they, they're, they're, all they wanted to do is let make the error messages go away, right? And which is which is a nice thing to do, but the thing is, is that you don't want to introduce more problems, right? You gotta, you. This is like, we always come back to this this concept: is when you run a WordPress site, you are managing a highly complex technology stack of PHP, your underlying host, MySQL database, and all the different plugins that are out there. And because you're managing that, you're responsible for that. Now, a lot of people don't know what they have in there because it's so complex, right? But as soon as you kind of open it up and try to figure out what's going on, then you, you start looking at that. And, you know, when I see, like I saw that other site, I think it was an English showing with 49 active plugins, you know, I kind of, my eyes kind of crossed a little bit because the, the question comes to mind is, are they all actually required? And number one, number, one, number two, do they actually all work properly, right? Very hard to tell, very hard to tell. Now, what you can also do is when you contact, for example, WP Engine or Flywheel, contact their, before purchasing a hosting environment, you tell them, listen, we're looking into your site. We think about hosting with you, uh, but we have some issues with our site. Would you be able to help us? Yeah. And then uh -huh. they would say, you know, they, they, you know they, they could say, yes, we know about these issues, or they could say, well, you can host it and then you can hire a developer to help you. But at least you can, you can ask them. Okay. Yeah, good Thank suggestion. You. Alvin, what's the warning long? You put that in chat. What's the warning long? What is that? I, when I did a performance, I think there's some images that makes it slow. What, what's the warning long? Is that, okay. a, is that a test suite? Uh, so if you do uh, right click and then you click the performance and then you run it, Oh, inside of DevTools. Yeah. Yep. Inside of DevTools. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, this is going to tell you a little bit about, let me just share my screen. So this is going to tell you. I did a, I did a, uh, a right click and on your website and did dev tools. So now this is, you have to actually run your site. Let me give you a refresh it here. So this profiles the performance of your site inside of dev tools, which sometimes you run this on a, on a um, GT metrics or some website, but this is actually doing it on your own computer. Uh, and so now this is going to do a, a refresh and we're going to see you kind of what what the, what, what the performance is here. This is a highly, fairly, fairly complex profiling tool. But let's see what it finds. Your screen, Alex, is very pixelated for some reason when you share. I'm not quite sure why. Can't, you barely can see anything. Huh? Words, that is. Oh, it's I, know. I know why, because I'm sharing optimized for, for uh, video clips. Oh, that's better. Much better. Yeah, I'm, this performance report is still running, so that, that can't be a good thing. <laughs> it, takes, it takes a very long time. It's still running, actually. Though. Alex, I just put into the chat window the GT Metrics report for the okay. uh, site's homepage. Let's load that And um, it's brutal. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, wow, look at this. Yeah. I can't read it all. Wow. Yeah, so basically, it's saying that your least content, like you have by, if this performance is really the case, Google will be penalizing for you if they haven't already quite a bit. Okay. Basically, what they're saying is your website, according to this, starts loading at nine seconds. Yeah, which is awful. I'm not actually seeing that bad of a performance when I'm doing it, but this is the, this is the, this is the perspective. So there's definitely something causing a, a fairly major delay up front. And I'm um, honestly, my guess is GoDaddy. Like, okay. If I had to, de if I had to like bet on something, go to one of those hosts, say, can you transfer the site to your host? 
pay for a month of it, see how it performs right out of the box. Flywheel, WP Engine, MDD Hosting, probably even SiteGround, just see. If you if you have equally bad performance there, that doesn't mean that, that means it's not the host. And that's a fairly easy exercise to experiment with. Um, but I mean, the images are not, not huge, right? Like, so, so the, the web page size is not gigantic either. Like it's not, it's not that bad, right? Images are roughly about half of the uh, website, which is to be expected. You have 93 page requests. That's, that's a lot. I mean, if, uh, with, a, with a custom theme, Divi, Divi, it's not, that's expected, but it's, um, it's quite a bit. So let me see if this uh, dev tools, fin okay, here we go. So this finished finally, yeah. Uh, this is the, this is another equivalent kind of, well, to dev tools. So you, again, yeah, it goes from 10, it's, it's a fairly, you know, 10 to 23 seconds, depending on what's happening here. But this is a, this is a, the same kind of GT metrics, except done in a very different way. So you can see that there is, you know, this is, this is the number of milliseconds involved. And so you're getting into some crazy, uh, some crazy time here for something to finish loading. So there's definitely a, an overall performance issue. But the thing is, is that you have to identify, is this a result of a host and, or is it a result of a, a problem in the way your site is designed and implemented? I mean, if you go to a different host and you have better performance, but it's still getting you a bad grade, you can pretty much point that there's a, there's, there's a clear design or some sort of implementation issue here. Okay. So, but this is, you gotta get this grade up to at least a, a B, right? Like. This is, this is bad. Yeah, thank you for the help. We appreciate it. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see what else do we have. I think we're done with the uh, actually we done with the questions here. Let me take a look here and see. Uh, Susan. Hey Susan. Susan, you still with us? I am sorry, just unmuting. I'm just so far behind all of you. I feel like now you're coming to the kindergarten class <laughs> with my question. We have some really um, complex. We we haven't actually really quote unquote helped anyone so far. We've just given them some guidance, but we haven't like I usually I like have, fix an actual real problem and say, okay, this is you're better off than you when you came here. A lot of ours are a lot more sort of theoretical and kind of. Well, listen, I've got a lot of lists, a longer list now of possible hosts for making a switch, but that's way down my list of priorities. So I have been wondering for quite a while whether it's possible to use different themes on one site um, and or to use different themes to distinguish pages from posts. <clears throat> Whoa. <laughs> or once you've picked a theme, do you use it throughout the whole site forever and ever? Well, one theme does is the whole site, but what the theme does can be quite dramatically different between different content types like posts and pages and custom post types. But so how do you figure you that out? Use, you can't use two themes for one site. Okay. Yeah. That's good. One theme, one site. All right. But what the theme does could be quite diverse, right? So how do you find out the properties of a theme? It's in the code under appearance on the theme editor. Ah, theme editor. Yeah. Okay, and I noticed that custom, earlier and I thought, and wait a minute. And it's I don't a customizer. It's customize. In, it's in three places. Customizer, options for a theme, if there is options. Mm -hmm. And then the theme editor. Okay. All right. So most themes starts with a customizer. If you go to customizer, it'll give you a bunch of options. Some have quite a bit of options. Some have almost nothing. And so if, if your theme, a theme is a piece of code that runs your website, right? It basically draws and combines your database content of all your data. So your content with the actual way it looks. That's what a theme's 
Okay. But a theme so, is yeah. actually, uh, but a theme is actually code. It's PHP code that combines PHP with cascading style sheets and JavaScript and, and draws your site. And the way that WordPress operates is it takes your database, combines it with the theme and renders the web page to the end user. So when we were doing that debugging, that time is the time it took for WordPress to get everything together and finally send it to the web browser and finish rendering it. And ideally that should take right. more than one or two seconds if possible. Three yeah. or four at the most, but not 10. Not 10. Yeah. Right? But okay. the, the theme choice and the way it's coded is the biggest factor of performance of WordPress because themes also comes with plugins sometimes. And so the more op op optimized the theme is for what it's supposed to do, the better it's uh, the performance of the site. And, and the themes in terms of what they do is could be dramatically different from each other. But to answer your question, a theme can actually render your page and post differently if it's designed to do so. Okay, which, and now it takes me back to a note, I think it was from Robin a couple of months ago about go through the sidebar with all the links, look at each of them carefully and try to figure it out. But the burning question was how many themes per site? So we've answered that. Um, so within that theme, can you change your backgrounds between pages and posts so that you have a different color? Uh, yeah. Some do. So, yeah. Okay, so I have to explore my theme, which is a fairly new one, but it popped up and it's exactly the shape I envisaged for a lot of my pages, um, which I'm not getting because my, the re last related question to that, I think, could be a cache issue because when I'm in edit, I will line things up, say, you know, seven photos. I'll have all nicely aligned along the left and right margins mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or wherever I want them. They look beautiful in edit, but when they are published, the alignment and the sizing seems to change sometimes. You want to show us? Um, I can't. I mean, I can try, but I have been a Christmas season delinquent. So mm -hmm. I want to share screen. I haven't done any work on my site mm -hmm. and I want to go to my site. So do I need to just go to my tabs for a minute? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not sure how to go to. to share your screen? Is a, there should be a green. Share my screen. screen. Yeah. Oh, exit full screen. Hang on. Maybe that will help. No. Because um, I have my WordPress admin page up. Yeah. But how do I get to the button? Under, it's under our, our videos. There should be a, a share screen, a green share screen. Yeah, square. I've got that. And select the select the tab or the window that has your admin in the uh, thumbnails that they present, that Zoom presents. Ah, maybe this will do it. There. Okay. Susan, what is the theme you're using? It's called Adri, A-D-R-I. And do you use a page builder or have a page builder? Um, I don't know. I use the simplest of everything possible. Well, I think None if you use a page builder, you'd probably know the name and that it was a page builder because it's okay. sort of like either. Yeah, I mean. Um, Can you see going, my going dashboard? Back to your, I'm sorry? Can you see my dashboard now? Not yeah. yet. No. Oh. Okay, because I found the tab, I was sharing screen, or I thought I was, and okay, I went to the Google page. Google page. It, it's in Zoom, your problem is. You're not sharing from Zoom. Share. There we go. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> 
Okay, right. so we were looking for themes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so there's my Adri, and we've loaded a couple of others on just in case I wanted to do something different. Right, but you have to, you can use one at a time, right? Okay, this this is what the page that's been kind of fooling me. Right. Okay, so I'm using Adri. Mm -hmm. um, theme details. Yeah. Okay, so it's a photography portfolio theme. Okay. Yeah. And so you see where it says widgets, menus, background. Yeah. Those are the customization options. Okay. You click on. If you click on widgets, okay, widget, sorry. Yeah, this, this will kind of take you to the various different parts of the theme that have, um, yeah, that have options. So it looks like this one has something called background. That's something that I don't normally don't see there. And so to click on background. Let's see if it what it allows you to change on the left sorry. on the left side. Um, left side pages on, under menus background. Yeah, left, left, so under appearance on the black uh, side. Oh, part. okay. Ah, all right. Background. There you go. There, sorry. Thank you. Sounded like Claudio. Cool. All right, so you actually can select a background image. Okay. So this is a customizer. Yeah. Here, we're in a customizer now. So in the customizer, they have a background, but it's but it's global, right? It'll do it for every every page. It does, yeah. And I've changed the background color. Um, I've stumbled on that once in a while. I'm I do a lot by the stumbling on method because I have a whole collection of things I know I know I'd like to do, um, but it's that's kind of an out of control way to do things, but it works. Okay, yeah. so if we wanted to go back to appearance, we go back to the dashboard. No, no, no. Just click the X there in the upper left. Ah, ah okay. So yeah. I, I just want you to tell me a little bit about themes, if you could. Well, it's you've got a, a theme is it's a collection of functionality, right? So you can check your customizer, which is customize. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so and you. widgets tells just, us. Just to clarify, Susan, for you, although when you click themes, it has your theme as the top left one of a, of a set of them. Yes. Those other themes can only be used as alternatives to the theme you've already got. So you okay. have three or four other themes. You could switch your site from one theme to another, but you can not have some of one and some of the other unless you become a developer to do it in a custom way, which obviously isn't going to be the no, case. I, I don't think that's my, my calling. So think, think of those other themes as just being available, uh, but only if you go from one theme to another, there's no halfway point. Okay, no, that's good to know because early on I did play around with a couple and that was what gave me the idea of using kind of categories of themes, but forget that. Okay, so there's widgets that can do all sorts of things. Um, well, oops, sorry. Oh, widgets, I'll look at my email. Widgets, uh, widgets actually allow you to configure uh, sidebars and all kind and you and introduce content into your website um, in in locations that the theme allows, which is footers, sidebars, so these are all your collections of widgets on the left. Right. And here's all your collections of, and, and you drag and drop from the left to the right where you have the widget areas, sidebar, oh, whatever okay. one. Okay. So unlike a theme, okay. uh, you can pick and choose from the catalog that's made up on the left-hand side of what you're looking at. Yeah. And you can use a given widget more than once if for some reason that makes sense. So widgets work a little differently than other things in WordPress. In other words, they sort of have their own job and way of working uh, as a result. Um, for what that's worth. They're building blocks yeah. for your page. Yeah, the thing, Susan, that you might well 
go to that learning center that Alex described earlier uh, so. and find out, see what they have to say about templates, because what you're trying to do is to have either um, use more of the templates than you are up to now in the theme you've got, or find ways to add a template or templates so that yes. they're available on your site. <clears throat> and so in the learning center, when they talk about templates, you'll start to get a That's what I'm looking for. On that. Interestingly enough, what I find interesting about themes is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, I, I, page templates are coding artifacts, meaning you actually create page templates as actual PHP files. I, I'm not aware of a way to configure a page template strictly to the admin interface. Am I wrong about well, that? No, hmm. you're not wrong, but what we can do, there are two options. The first option uh, is the, the page builder way, which means you know you, you, you have a blank slate and then you, you just hmm. spill in all the content of the design that you want. The second option, which I recommend you do, which has maybe a steeper learning curve, but a bit, like better for the long run and for the future, is to use uh, the Gutenberg blocks and with, with the Gutenberg blocks, you can actually create whichever page layout that you want, and they will become more and more versatile and more functional as we go. Um, you, can, you can, and today there are even, what's it called? It's called patterns. So you can actually create a whole layout and duplicate it and save it and, and uh, reuse it across sites. Uh, it's patterned, it's reusable blocks. So I would suggest rather than trying to fight through uh, the woods of, of this theme or another theme, go the standard way. Install uh, uh, 2021 or 2020 WordPress theme, which has all the latest functionality of the block editor. Mm -hmm. And then learn how to use a block editor, which will take you a very long way if you know how to use it. And then on well, top see, of the block editor- that's what I am you using. Sorry, I am using the block editor. And I've right. been so you're amazing. also using functionality of the web of the theme, which may interfere and may have its ah. own constraints. So again, we have to you know check it per se for, for the specific theme. But my rule of thumb would be if you want to learn it the right way and you know be future proof, at least for the beginning stages where you learn how to create your website, use the standardized tools that WordPress developers give you. And that's right now, it's a block editor. And yeah. going forward, the block editor will give you much more tools to customize your site. There's, you know, in the, in the near future, you will be able to build the footer and the header of your site with a block editor, which will make it a much easier experience once you yeah. know how to do it. Now, Dan, up to now, okay. and Alex, up to now, at least up to Gutenberg, custom post types was the technique that you used to add a template to a site. and that is relatively straightforward for two of the three steps that are involved in creating one. But in the five or six or seven years that the custom post types have been around, they've required fairly complex plugins to implement with any degree of sort of ease. Um, but that is the way technically to add both a template and also a custom taxonomy that may be to support that template. Um, and then that becomes um, completely consistent with the way WordPress works. That's the most faithful to the old WordPress. Um, I'm not sure, Dan, does the custom hmm. post types get superseded by Gutenberg somewhere down the line? So custom post types are mainly intended if you want to add a new taxonomy. So if you have, um, you know, uh, a record site and you start, uh, you, you want to have a taxonomy for artists, you want to have a taxonomy for labels, you want to have a taxonomy for albums, or, you would or use custom products post as WooCommerce has. The, the most common one is right, uh, exactly. Uh, or or a template, for example, for the, for a music review as such, that when done as a custom post type, looks fairly similar to um, advanced custom fields and its approach. Um, right. I mean, there but, are two but, ways know, to get to the same end result potentially. Robin, but Susan is just learning to drive, and you you try no, 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 to get inside I'm a just Formula One car. That, that I'm not I'm not recommending that to her. I'm just saying that to be to be clear about what it's, WordPress does. This is actually the the challenge, though. Here, custom post types are a crucial part of it. 
Right. But here's the challenge with somebody like Susan, which is, you know, God bless her. And because she is a typical WordPress user and she is asking a very, very good question. Like, well, I want the background of my blog posts to be different than my pages, right? So a very mm -hmm. straightforward question. And we still haven't answered it after 20 minutes of discussion. And, and this is actually the problem. The problem is that there are so many different ways to accomplish your answer, but none of them are as simple right now as clicking somewhere in your user interface, particularly because your theme hasn't allowed you to do so. It hasn't been designed or coded in a way that lets you do that. Ah, well, they did warn in the description of it that it's still kind of at the beta testing level. Okay, but but the thing is again, like well, it may not have all the options. So <laughs> the, the I'm thing beginning is that, to see. Problems. Yeah, so it, it may not be the right thing for you. If you so here, when you're looking for theme functionality, what you have to do is explore themes that accomplish as most of what you want to do as possible out of the box. Yeah. Because if you don't have that, you will always end up having, and I wanted to do that and it doesn't do it. That means you have to code it. Uh, code yeah, it means everything that over. Dan and, and Robin was talking about. Mm -hmm. Advanced custom post types, uh, meta boxes, advanced custom fields, custom <laughs> templates. No, you see, you're doing this thing right here. You see, are you doing that? Uh -huh. that, tells me, that tells me something. And I've said this before many Good. times to other people. WordPress may not be the right system for you. Okay. Ah. Okay. <laughs> like it may not, because the thing is that like, you look at this and everybody that's here is looking at WordPress and they think it's a magic bullet. Almost none of them, almost none of us have a deep respect of what's happening here. And, and, and should you have a deep respect? Maybe. Do mm -hmm. you just want to get your job done? Yes. But the thing yeah. is, is that you have to understand what you're dealing with. You are driving a formula one car. Now, whether you know how to drive that Formula One car and you drive it like a Honda Civic, that's up to you. That's not up to us. But the point is, it is a Formula One car. There are a lot of options. There are all a lot of places to break and you better know what you're doing. And so this is, I always go back to this. Right, but I think Dan, Dan made a very good point though in saying if you went, for example, with a 2021 theme, yeah. Mm -hmm. then you get the benefit of all of the effort that goes into that as a, as a demonstration totally. of WordPress itself, sure. but you also join a community of many users of that specific theme. Right. right. And, um, and it, so that's one of the ways of dealing with being a novice and learning your way. It still won't give you the option. safe to, bets on things that still people won't give you the options of changing the color of posts versus pages. Mm. It still won't have that option. That's Susan asked a very, no, no, but I'm, I'm saying what the strategy of how you go about WordPress is what we're talking about now, not know, the specific but, detail of background. I understand, and but this I'm is, just, I'm just this is, reinforcing this is Dan's point that yeah. there are, are some really good reasons and benefits to go. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing of, with that. It doesn't solve Susan's problem. And this is what, all this, right. I, I must reply yeah. because Robin said my name, right? Robin said my name. I must reply that how it goes. So, what you're well, the thing is, again, uh, hold on, hold on. For an analogy, we'll keep on using the F1 uh, analogy. So, what Susan is saying, she's sitting in an F1 car and she's saying, But I want the blinker to be purple, not orange. <laughs> so, no, you start using the car, you start mastering the turns and uh, the acceleration and the brake before you think about the color of the blinker. Once you do mm -hmm. one, one lap around the track, and you're feeling confident, then you start changing the color of the blinker. Before that, you see that you can write the posts. You most can add the, the, the right. content most WordPress areas, users you master the menu. Yeah, but most WordPress users don't wanna do that. That's, that's actually the problem. And this is actually why we have this meetup because we want you to respect your Formula One car. If you don't respect it, this mm. is not the product for you. This is not the product. Right. For you. This is well, and not you driving see a Formula fine. One car. You should, get a form, you should go to Squarespace or Wix or all those systems that or have- Or hire a developer, or hire a driver or to drive hire, your car. Or hire somebody to, to, to drive your Formula One car because Dan is a Formula One car driver. I really likes them. No, well, this is- I wish I was. Because what I, see what or I- Or read WordPress for dummies. There you go. Right? Yes, oh yes, I've read that. It put me to sleep. That's, that's ah. how I built my site. Perfect. I, I took this page by page and that's how I built my site. Jennifer, 
please weigh in. Tell us, we have, we're not explaining this correctly. Please go ahead. Well, it's just, you need to kind of start at the beginning of something like this that's meant for your level because you're not a programmer, I'm not a programmer. Mm -hmm. And I just took this and I started working through it. And as I had questions, and this is probably an out-of-date version now, I don't know. Um, and then I went and played with it. And then I made mistakes on my tests. You know, I, nobody knew my site. So I just played with it till I got it. And now when I have questions, I go to this, then I go to Google, and then I come to a forum like this. But you do have to learn a certain amount of this in order but yet, to- But yet again, Jennifer, is there an in, in the index, does it show you how to change the background color of posts to pages, different colors? Not really, no, because you've got to understand what you're doing, but it's going to help you understand the difference between a page and a post. Yes. Because I think that's that's the language level if you're reading the intro stuff, because mm -hmm. you can make different types of pages that have different things. And I don't think yet that you'd understand the difference between page and post. So Excellent. the vocabulary is in here. Excellent. That's absolutely yeah. correct. By the I, way, when WordPress started, all they had was posts. Okay. I know. Yeah. So pages is a custom post type of posts. Oh, and frankly, I'm quite happy to take what I can get on this um, because luckily or unluckily for me, I've been in work like professional situations where I get to hire the developers with the company's money. Um, I'm sure most of us have been there one time or another and it's great and they know what they're doing and you can say, oh, I want a blue background and tomorrow it'll be there and you can proof it online and it's lovely. But I'm, ju I'm just literally just as important trying to do a simple site for myself. And I'm quite happy to lower my expectations if I know, for instance, the answer I got from you tonight, one page, one theme, all the same through the whole site, that's really useful for me to know. Otherwise, I have amazing expectations because I've worked with developers with some really astonishing sites paid for with lots of dollars. Right, exactly. So if you go to page, so you go to pages now and go to one of your pages and we'll I'll show you the page template functionality. Um page. So just go to any one of your pages. This let's it? go to well let's go to the front page. Sure. Just okay. Oh on the yeah. right hand side when you're editing the page. Whoops, I should go back to editor. Uh Okay. Okay, so go Oops. No, on Move the right picture. On the right side, go to page attributes all the way at the bottom. Ah, oh, yes. You see where it says default. Template? Uh huh. Okay. So that is the functionality for what template is being used. Now, if you scroll that template, if you, if you drop it down, let's see what other templates you have. You have one called special, whatever that means. Hmm. Defined by the most likely by the theme creator. Yeah. Now, have you tried switching to the special template to see what happens? Oh no, I'm afraid to do that. Well, that you, now you're in a Formula One car. So I you, know. <laughs> so you better know that you should be able to shift into sixth or fifth gear. You better know what it's doing because if you're afraid, you shouldn't be in this car. No, you're right. You're right. Well, go ahead and do it now. Let's see what happens. And then update and let's see what happens. <clears throat> ah. Let's just see what happens to your to your page. And then let's view the view the page with the special template. Ooh. Doesn't what look happens? as though it's done much of anything. It looks identical, doesn't it? Pretty close. Well, is it or is it actually different? I don't think, no, because all my, my line spaces and everything, nothing's changed. Okay, so let's go back and see, and, and let's see if, if special actually does anything. It's possible that it's doing something that's not even being reflected here, right? It could have looked completely differently. Let's go back to your- oh, uh, You know what it did? Because look, here in the edit anyway, uh -huh. um, this is on two lines and it switched stuff to one. So you know what? It's using the space better. Huh, that's possible. Yeah, so there's fewer cuts between the lines. Uh -huh. Let's, let's go back to the other one and take a look. Just a minute. It's Default. easy to switching templates and hitting update. See, 
Yeah. No need to be afraid. Okay, new page. Oh no. Nope, yeah, it looks, that's it. It, it, looks, was, it looks the same. So there's something else happening, or maybe that template is just a copy of another one. Yeah. Uh, so does the page anything? have a menu when you scroll up? Yeah. A menu? Yeah, Sandy is suggesting a CSS. Sandy, you want to speak up and tell us what you'd like to, to do? Okay. Uh, if you, in the top of your uh, top black bar in the nav, uh -huh. um, it says customize. Ah. Okay, go there. And additional CSS on the left-hand side. There it is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do a period blog. Where or what? Just at the bottom, there's a number one there. Oh, yes. Do a period blog. A uh, curly bracket. Yeah. And then uh, background hyphen color colon. Oh, no, inside, inside the curly bracket. Oh, okay. So it'll be in between them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, there is a way to do this. There's background right. color. color. Yeah. And then just do a um, uh, colon. Yeah. Inside the curly bracket. Go Whoops, back inside. Okay. <laughs> Might be easier Hold to on. paste it into the chat window. That's and okay. Then, I like yeah, this. Yeah, I did. I like, okay. I like uh, hashtag CCC. So it, just going to make Whoops. it gray. Also inside the curly bracket, right? Back inside those brackets. Sorry. You don't want to be in the brackets. You don't like the brackets. I, yeah. I don't think so. Um, CCC lowercase. Yeah. yeah. The color. Okay. Semicolon. And then semicolon. Uh, semicolon. Pu uh, publish, right? No, 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 semicolon after the CCC. Yeah, I can do a semicolon. You don't really need it if you're not putting it in inside the curly brackets. Um, take, it, take it off the end and put it inside. Oh, I thought I heard so someone saying put it outside the curly brackets. No, 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 no. Sorry, it wasn't your voice, so. No, exactly. It was okay. one of those guys. No. <laughs> now publish? Publish. and go to a blog post and just see if that worked. Okay, um, here. Oh, what is this that's just shown up? I get this every now and then. Mm. But you didn't get that color, so. Well, hang on a sec. Um, let's try this. Nope, same color. Okay, Susan, all the solutions. And so the galleries are the blog posts. Now, which are the, the... Oh, Im there's images. Right, and those are the That's blog right. posts. And these are performance portraits, Jazz Atlantique. Oh, and uh -huh. um, yeah, these are my posts. Okay, so um, hmm. instead of writing blog, write the word single. Okay. Or you know, or ar dot. maybe archive. I think might work. Well, this is a single post that we're looking at. So. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else to change? Whoops. Should we go with that? Publish? No, well, you don't need to publish. It should have changed it on the fly. So if it's not changing, oh, so something is... Uh, Try um, archive you, instead of single. Archive, okay. Yeah, the CSS does reflect in, in real time if, if, you're, if you happen to be on the okay. stage that you're on. Right? So. So if it's if it's if it's functional, it doesn't have to be published. If it actually is, does something, is the left All bracket? Right, what you need okay. to do what what you need to do is add the word body. 
to oh. before before the archive. All right. Before the dot. Before the dot. Before the dot, sorry. No dot body. Yeah, there you go. Did that work? Now, now this no. is not an archive. This is a single. So change the word archive to single. Back to single. <laughs> Whoops. Too many S's. Hey. There we go. Ha ha. Now instead of CCC, you can change it to whichever color you can write. <laughs> whatever you know, color you like. Yeah. Okay, let's call it blue. How will we decide that? So remove the type hashtag and type in type in blue. Remove the hashtag. Right. And you'll see something wonderful. Ooh. <laughs> well, it's very blue. <laughs> yeah. There's um Susan, are you aware of something called a color picker? Does that term ever come up? Uh no. I mean I know there's there's somewhere in this cust not anyway, the customizing uh, just to one. jump to the, the point. Get people, boxes. Who, yeah, if you you could there are several ways to pick a color for background or other purposes, but um, uh, just make a note of the of the word color picker and you can Google it. Yeah. Uh, to I find just, a browser uh, extension which will enable you to find a color you like and get its color value by I, using the extension. Well, you see, mm -hmm. I can get that in this editor. I get a whole. Uh, range well, of not what you don't. What you don't get in the editor is a palette which lets you pick the color from the palette. Well, it's, it's or let's good. see. Go, show me the palette, and uh, I just yeah, let me go out. back. Uh, there, there because there are oftentimes there's a pop-up there. palette in CSS yeah. controls. Check your chat and uh, click on the color names link I shared, and I'll give you a palette of 140 popular HTML colors. Okay. Uh, or right, you can the link the link above that. Um, the colorable is a really fun place to sort of uh, tool around with different colors if you want to get. Exact. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, oh, where did chat go? Is that blue on every page or just that page? That should just I hope be... it's not on every page. Well, go to a different page, right? Yeah. Go to a page it's that on you every, know. It's on every blog post in your site, man. Yeah. Ah. Just, in, just on blog posts. Oh, just some. Oh, oh, I get it. Okay. Whoops. Um, you come on. Ah, it's a lovely shade of blue, but I think it's a little too intense. <laughs> well, you can't, it makes your text completely illegible. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Hopeless. Yes. Let's try uh, aquamarine. An additional <laughs> okay. CSS. Okay, where did our box go? Additional CSS. Oh, oh no, 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 don't click out of it. Type in, <laughs> type in aquamarine. Aquamarine. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Now I can't see my. How about just white? I just How about beige? Out. Have fun. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, Aquamarine, you just want to see if I can spell well, under pressure. Autocomplete right there. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Oh, it's changing as we speak. It's yeah. good because it's previewing it. Yeah. Try, oh. try deep sky blue. <laughs> Alex, you're selling all the industry secrets. Good. No, no, all one, one word. word. All one, one word. word. You're breaking. You're not a coder. You Sorry. No spaces anywhere. <laughs> no spaces whatsoever are allowed. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. It's, I'm just... You're just having fun now. Uh... <laughs> Try uh, hot pink. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've got one for you. Fuchsia. Um, F U S C H I A. Eh, not, a, not, a, not a standard. No. Color. Not a standard color. Magenta is though. Pink. Yeah, there oh. we go. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, now, this is... now, but now somebody explained this incantation 
I'll, I'll leave it up to Sandy to explain what actually was being, is going on here. Uh, all right. What you're doing now is you're adding a little bit of custom CSS. Um, and the, uh, the blog posts have different classes in their header than the rest of the site. So it was a matter of finding um, the, the one that I had originally was on a different site. Um, finding what the theme calls those posts, what custom classes get entered into those posts in the header of the page. And then you can address yeah. that directly. Ooh. Well, I just made notes of your CSS coding and... I think everyone that uses WordPress should know CSS. By the way, uh, uh... Sorry, I forgot your name. Single. Jennifer, Jennifer, does your book have a section on CSS coding? The Let WordPress for dummies? I was curious. And how and, and how they relate to themes. It's uh gotta dust it off here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is by far the most under under sold pieces of the customizer. Bye, Alvin. Thank you for joining us. Because this, this um, additional CSS is by far the most powerful piece of the customizer. But, oh. but people need to know CSS to use it, though. Yeah. And you yeah. know what the classes are in IDs. You know what, Susan? <coughs> Just in the meanwhile, uh, change the background color to white. Uh -huh. Okay. Because that's going to be one that you can, you know, there you go. And yeah. now click publish. Mm -hmm. And okay. then, and then what will happen now is that it'll be white and that's an acceptable color in the meanwhile. Mm -hmm. And then when you, you can go in and find your perfect color, then you can just replace the white with um, another, either a hex number or a color name. Did you publish? No, not yet. I'm just thinking whether I want to do this or try something closer to what I'd like to see. Um, I know, I'm going to try, I'm making them up now, pale yellow. Golden, it'll be goldenrod probably. But it is goldenrod, yeah. Ah, there, okay, that one I can live with. <laughs> All right. That's good. Well, I had sort of a gray originally, and I didn't like it, but that was when I discovered this background feature. For your information, not, if, you, for if, the you whole thing. Out, if you X out of additional CSS without publishing, you lose all your changes in the CSS. Right. So the oh, reason okay. you're publishing it now is so that when you find your absolutely perfect color, you can go back mm -hmm. and all you have to do is, is like an edit on that little piece of text. You don't have to remember remember the code. Yeah, okay, and all of this is in edit page. We're gonna test you, click X. Click X, the yeah, which top one? Left top corner. left, there you top go. Left, yeah. And now go to your dashboard. Now find your way back to custom CSS. Oh. I, I, I dare you, I dare you to find your way back. <laughs> Um, I wish Matt Mullenweg was watching this. Oh, there it is. <laughs> How many of you are professional teachers? None of there us. There it is. You got it. Hey, well oh, done. Wow. Well done. <laughs> well done. Wow, well, thanks. Well done. Um, so additional CSS. Okay. Well, this is great because I've had about a month without, I literally haven't touched my website until today to get ready for this meeting um, because there hasn't been time, but time is coming up soon. So thank Learn, you. I think Learn I CSS get... deeply. Oh. I, that's what, that's what Mal Wong should actually say at his next WordPress. Uh, say again? Learn CSS <laughs> deeply. Oh, okay. Learn CSS <laughs> deeply. Hmm. Forget JavaScript. Most people are not going to learn JavaScript deeply. But people that you learn HTML first. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> learn HTML first. 
But actually, if you only learn, I don't know, a dozen elements in HTML, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get sort of 90% of normal work done. Um, the, you know, yes, the, the vast I, number of that, additional really. elements just aren't used in the ordinary day-to-day, -day, you know, producing of text. But HTML is, is a place to start and it can be learned by anybody fairly straightforwardly. I mean, it's, it's um, highly recommended. It's and then CSS will make a lot more sense yeah. and it'll take half the time to learn it on <laughs> the base of HTML that, because CSS is obviously directly connected to HTML. And uh, the, the two, you have to understand something about both to make either work. Everything is being done to make sure you don't need to know either of those. So Gutenberg and themes <laughs> abstract away any of these notions. But the, the challenge is like, the, if you were to do this, you could create a page template that introduces the CSS as part of that page template. And then you can apply to any page, potentially you're gonna post, and this will apply the CSS. Here you've globally kind of assigned that body.single will use goldenrod as a color, as a background color, okay? Yeah, because I was gonna ask you about that. Oh yes, I will experiment. Over on that desk, I have a whole file from a course I started on web design about five or six years ago. We did lots of HTML, uh, most of which, like, I don't want to offend anybody, but <laughs> I don't really find a lot of this particularly interesting. You know, it's a problem. I <laughs> it may be a necessary evil, but the thing is, well, is that yeah, precisely. Class, even the smallest amount of knowledge, even a tiny little bit, can actually have very big effects on the way your website looks. Well, I think yeah, the other so thing the about the HTML and the CSS that's important is that you will have far greater confidence in what you're doing when you have that very basic sort of lay of the land and notion of what you're dealing with. And in the absence of understanding something about those two areas, you really don't, I mean, you're kind of up there in the air with nothing underneath you to give you any mm. sense of comfort or, or confidence. No, I mean, I'm just, I have to rely on the kindness of strangers, as it were. So I, now I have a question though. If body.single changes the blog colors, what would I use to change the main page colors. Well, the, the dot single is the name of the template in question that the, the, oh, the okay. blog posts are using. So if you have another template, yeah, uh, it could be uh, dot index, for example, which is, <laughs> which might well be the front page or the home page. And okay. so well, uh, you probably wouldn't need to do additional CSS for that. You can probably back up and do that in the, like back up into the customizer. Possible, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the arrow under the X. Uh-huh. And then Sorry. under colors there. Colors. Ah, uh, there's the one. This is the one I've been using. Yeah, and in where you see background color. colors. You're going to be yeah. able to change the background color and it's going to affect There's... everything except the one that you specified in CSS. Ah, and is this, I think Don may have left or Dan, sorry. Um, but is this what Dan you mean by a color picker? Oh, you are there. Good. Yeah, yeah it's a color picker. Yep. Yeah. One there, there are different ways of presenting a color picker. Uh, like it could be a round wheel, for example, or sure, this square yeah. block idea. But if it's a means of selecting a color and a color value, then call it a color picker. Okay, really and like Robin, that. you'll laugh because when you say color picker, I was looking in my drawer to see if I have my Pantone color book sitting here. <laughs> I know you would know what I mean by that. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely correct. In fact, yeah. Sandy shared a really cool link called colorable at JXMLK. Ah. Yeah, I'll share my screen so you can see kind of what this looks like. It's really quite good. Um, because what's cool about it, you know, you'll clearly see what's good about it in a second, um, is that 
it allows you, if you go to this website, uh, which is in the chat, we'll publish it on the site. You can yeah. specify the, the, uh, the text the color and the background oh. by adjusting what you're probably familiar with, which is hue, saturation, and lightness, mm -hmm. and adjust these and then combine with the text front and you get a nice combination. And instantly what it's showing you is the text hex color and the background hex color. Why we call yes. it hex? We call it hex colors because these are hexadecimal values in base 16. And so what's happening here is that the red, green, blue values of this mm -hmm. text is one C in hexadecimal, which is which is actually there's a there's a number from zero to 255 for the value of red, green, and blue. Well, and that answered the question I haven't asked you, but I've been wondering about how in the world do you change your text colors? Oh, there's a there's a there's a property uh, called color, uh, and we just, have uh, to... Alex, we just we were just there a minute ago where yeah. we had before um, from Sandy on that editing bar. Yeah, right where it said background color, select it, and below that it had font color. Oh, oh font, yeah. yeah. On, on here? On the customizer. Oh, on the customizer, yeah, on the customizer. Yeah. Go ahead yeah. Go ahead and share your uh, screen again, Susan. Whoops. Uh <laughs> Okay, just a minute now. We're mastering Zoom here. We've lost Zoom. Where are you? Um, uh, Sandy, this is a really good share. I really like this, uh, this uh, color picker. Um, oh, sure. it's a great little picker. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And it's nice for designers. It's nice for artists because it's you're dealing with uh, just addressing color, right? Yeah, yeah. The randomizer. Think, actually you know what? Cool. I think by mistake I closed it. Sorry. Yeah. Close I what? closed the tab. Oh. Sorry. Okay, you can go back to it. Oh no, it's right there. It's right next to the customizer. Or sorry, right next to the. It is. That's yeah. the left, right there. there oh, go. there it is. Sorry. Yeah, so there, your your uh, there's your background color, and there's your uh, there's your uh, oh, you have a link color. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. Okay, there. and then go back to colors. Yes. Um, click the back arrow and customize. Dang it! All right, so you might have to do it in uh, additional CSS. For the yeah, I had a really hard time finding this, and eventually, it's like everything else. It just sort of showed up. Huh. The font color, because I had something horrible on there for a while that you could not see. What the uh, the link color or the text color? The text color. Huh. So yeah, but anyway. So the thing is, I mean, some of the stuff that I need and want is here, which as you can see, I'm finding by happy accident. Um, it would be nice to have a bit more control though. So now I've got more ideas and the pasta water is boiling, I think. So time to go. There's, I can hear action down in the kitchen. All right. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, well, thank you, Sandy. This is great. And thanks, everybody, for your ideas and help. And yeah, okay. I'll catch up with you eventually, I hope, in terms yeah. of knowledge. All <laughs> right. You to help. We're going to finish up here. Uh, our next, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll publish this in WPToronto.com, this conversation. Our next meeting will be in February, at the third Tuesday of February, which is... Look at my calendar here. Uh, it's the 16th of February. The day okay. After, okay. And there'll be a similar kind of the same link. Make sure you register on meetup.com to get reminders. And with that, we will sign off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Stay healthy, everybody. You too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not allowed to get right. sick. Nobody's allowed to get sick on here. <laughs> no, exactly. Take care. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. -bye.